Sorry. Guys, welcome to this week's Mittler Senior Tech. We are going to be discussing language apps. Today is March 31st, 2024. All right, guys, so welcome. We are looking for sponsors for our upcoming classes. And if you are interested, it's only $15, uh, $50. So if you'd like to do this, just please email um, info at mittlerseniortech.com. We'd greatly appreciate it. And if you donate, we'd be able to keep on presenting these classes and teaching um, tech to seniors like you guys. All right, so I'm going to read our quick mission statement. So it is the responsibility of the younger generation to educate seniors about technology. The goal of Mittler Senior Technology is to cure the issue of social isolation within senior communities and to help seniors feel connected with our new world of technology. Our personalized classes strive to educate seniors on how to communicate with friends and family in a manner in which the world is accustomed to today and how to use technology tools to enhance and simplify their daily lives, changing the world one senior at a time. All right, so Miller Senior Tech is, is obviously a great um, company. We've taught over 3,000 3, seniors in 10 different countries, and we've taught more than 400 classes. And so besides from, from this free class on Zoom, there are computer basic classes, right, with the, which is taught by Jordan Miller himself, who started the company. And it is a 10-lesson course about computer and smartphone basics. And the reduced price is seven fifty per class. And again, it is taught by Jordan Miller himself. And all you need to do to sign up is just go to MillerSeniorTech.technology slash basics class. And then there is actually uh, an advanced computers class, which kind of dives deeper. And it is a 10 lesson course, but it goes to the next level of technology skills. So you, you do more intense um, technology to aspects of technology and the reduced price is $10 per class. And again, it is taught by Jordan Miller himself. And all you have to do to um, take this class is go to Miller Senior Tech Doc Technology slash advanced class. All right. So if you have any information or you want to sign up for any of these courses, you just have to um, type into your search bar, MillerSeniorTech.com. And if you have any questions or you'd like to maybe sponsor us, which would be great, um, just type info at MillerSeniorTech.com. And stay tuned till the end because there is a big announcement at the end of today's class. All right, guys. So our agenda, it's, it's a language app. But specifically, we're going to be touching upon Google Translate, which is going to be taught by me. Um, Duolingo, which is again going to be taught by me. And then we're going to have uh, Nathaniel Chetri, who's one of our very experienced teachers, one of the best in the business. Um, he's going to be teaching Wordle and the New York Times Spelling Bee. And then Victor Moshe is going to be teaching ChatGPT, and then we're going to have a conclusion. All right. So let's first dive into our first topic, and that is going to be Google Translate. All right. Um, so Google Translate, Google Translate is a free tool developed by Google that enables you to translate sentences, documents, and even websites from one language into another in a matter of seconds. So this is obviously unbelievable technology. You're able to understand, translate uh, many different languages across the world, from China, Spanish, Italian, Russian, or and any language. Whether you're in a foreign country and need help translating something, or you're reading a book with some foreign language in it, you can use Google Translate to help you translate almost anything. So I use Google Translate a lot during the week because I'm dealing with languages like Spanish, French, Hebrew. So it's very, it's very um, helpful, uh, very helpful uh, engine, search engine. And it is accessible on the internet, and you can download it as an app or on your smartphone, or Apple or Android. Or Android. <coughs> All right, so now we're gonna actually get into uh, a demo, a hands-on demo. So Victor, can you type in uh, Google uh, Translate, please? Thank you. All right, so when you type in Google Translate into your search bar, this is what's gonna come up. All right, so it's right in front of you. Either you can keep it here or you can click on the, the link. We could do either, Victor. You want to click click on the link, why not? All right, so now that we're on this screen, right? So it's totally free. All you have to do is just type it in on your shirt spur. All right, so um Victor, let's type in let's type let, let's type in hello and let's translate it into Hebrew. So first what Victor is gonna do is he's gonna type on the left side of the screen, he's gonna type hello. Now, as you can see on the right side of the screen, it is still going to say hello. So what you are going to need to do is you are going to need to 
click on that that Spanish Hebrew, one of those, right? You can search, you can also, yeah, you're going to pop, you can click on that arrow and you can look at whatever language you want to. As you can see, there are hundreds of languages on here. You can search up whichever one you want. And so, Victor, can we type in, let's type in Hebrew. So let's select Hebrew. All right. So, as you can see, Victor selected Hebrew and it's Shalom. Shalom is hello in Hebrew. Now, it's very important to know that you have to type in the word, you have to type in the word and then select what language you want that word to be translated at, into. So, for example, let's give another example, right? So, let's do have a nice day. So, Victor on the left side of the screen, the white box, he's going to type have a nice day. Have a nice day, right? Perfect. And instead, now let's say you're in uh, you're in Mexico, right? And you want to tell someone to, ha to have a nice day. You'll have to select on the Spanish because as you can see, it's still in Hebrew. So Google Translate, until we switch that actual language, it is going to continue to be either translating it into English or the language that we selected before this, which was Hebrew. So Victor, can you click on Spanish, please? All right, boom. So just change to Spanish. Que te haga un lindo día. So that means have a nice day in Spanish. And so there we go. That's it's another great translation. And so now you're actually able to hear how to pronounce that. So as you as you just heard me, I, I really don't know how to how to pronounce that so well. So we're going to click on that uh, on that speaker button right there. So if you want to click on that. Can we hear? All right. So I can't really hear it. I don't know if you guys hear it, but what it would do is it would there would be a, uh, this AI voice that would actually tell you how to pronounce every word. And so this is really helpful because maybe you can sound not you sound knowledgeable. You don't mess up a uh, um uh like like a uh, like a uh, you don't mess up the way you say a word because that word can mean something else. So this is also a very helpful a very helpful thing about Google Translate. Um, now there's another really great aspect about Google Translate. So there's something called detect language. So let's say if you hear a word or a sentence you might not know in a foreign country, even in America, in the United States, wherever you live. Let's say if you go into a store, you hear a word. Um, if you hear a word or a sentence you don't know, so you can click on. Que on, tenga uh, un lindo día. Oh, perfect. So as you can, as you as you just heard, Victor, play one more time. Que tenga un lindo día. So as you can tell, uh, an AI voice just specifically stated how to actually pronounce each word. Um, so, you, so maybe the person who you're talking to in Spanish will know what you are saying. So there's a really great, um, a great, a great aspect about this, which is it's there's something called detect language. So what detect language is is let's say if you hear a word that you might not know, um, what detect language is is it can help you identify what the word means and what language that comes from. So, Vic, you wanna you wanna click on, so type in type in let's say type in like a Hebrew a Hebrew word or a Hebrew set, right? And so let's say you weren't sure what type of language this phrase or or word was, and so you wanted to know. So you click on the tech language. So right now we're on the tech language. Now the thing about the tech languages, since you do you aren't certain what type of language or you you aren't you don't know how to identify that language that that word into which language, you're gonna click. Um, detect language and so now it's not going to matter what language you have selected in that in that second option victor go over to like spanish or Hebrew or english it's not going to matter which one you selected because this um google translate is going to actually detect the language for you and give you a definition and say which language that word is from so victor you want to type in like a hebrew or, or spanish phrase So he's going to type in a, a Hebrew phrase. And so now, right, so now, as you can see, it's going to give you a, a translation of that word, but it's also going to tell you what language that word is from. So in, so as you can see, yeah, right above it, where Victor highlighted, it says um, dial detected Hebrew. So that means that Google Translate, they were able to take the, take the word, put it into their system, get the definition of it for you in whatever language you wanted, and then tell you what word, what language that word is in. So that's another really great aspect. Um, and again, Victor, let's just give a couple more examples um, of, of, of different sayings or words. And then, so let's go to like, Victor, type in, uh, type in, type in the phrase, I have to go to work. And so then, Victor, let's change. Let, let's let's change that language scope. Let's go into the search bar, Victor. Click on the 
the, the down arrow. All right, and let's do let's do Italian. Let's do Italian. So Victor, click on Italian. Let's we can also search up Italian if you can't find it. All right, and so we're gonna click on Italian and boom. Devo andare a volarte. Let's let's hear the the the, the actual pronunciation. I'm Devo not andare a lavorare. All right, and there you go. So as we see, we put typed in uh an English phrase. We selected which language we wanted to, it to be in. It gave us the it gave us the, the the transition, the translation of it, and we we're able to actually hear how to pronounce it. So again, this is, Google Translate is obviously awesome. It helps you stay connected. So maybe if you're in a foreign country, if you're in America, if you're in any store and the person might speak a different language from you, it allows you to connect to people who you might not be able to connect with. Um, and then you can also, another great aspect is you can actually copy the phrase. So Victor, if you want to go on the bottom, the bottom right, there are those two cards exactly when you click on that. And then it says copy trend, uh, translation copy. And so what this means is instead of having to type these 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 phrases in these other languages that you aren't sure how to type or you aren't sure how to spell it, all you can do is just right copy the translation, type it into a text message. Let's say if you're texting someone who doesn't speak the same language as you, you're able to copy and paste this into your text messages, send it to them, and that's it. It's that simple. And Victor, should we should we show them how to translate websites or, or documents? All right. So now the, these are some new um, new aspects of Google Translate. So if you wanted to, right, let's say if you hold documents, right, which are all Hebrew, or let's say if you go to websites, which are all Spanish, right? All you're going to have to do is just click on the website option above. So click on that. Type in any website that is, let's say, translated into a, a language that you that you don't know, right? So as we can as you can see, me and Victor, we looked up a Hebrew website. So all Victor is going to do is he's just going to copy, select the uh, the, the website, he's going to copy the website and the, the IRL, and he's going to paste it right into that, that box. And so as you can see, we just pasted it. Then you're going to click on that blue arrow to translate. All right. So now it's going to translate the whole website. So as you can see, this is a, this is a Bible, right? This is a Bible website, and it was in all in Hebrew. And now it translated not just the website IRL, not just one or a couple of the words. It translated the entire website. So it's Genesis, you have Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Joshua. It gives explanations of it in English. So it not, it not only just changed some words of the website, but it converted the entire website into English. You're able to really understand um, and be able to read that, that website. Let's say we wanted to change it. Let's say we change it into, change it into, Victor, let's change it into Japanese. Let's change it to Japanese, right? So let's say if you wanted to learn the Bible in Japanese, right? I'm just going to click on Japanese and boom, everything's in Japanese now. So now you have Genesis in Japanese and I mean, I don't speak Japanese, but I mean, this, it changed the entire website, every single word into Japanese. Um, and so this is just really awesome because now instead of you, maybe you come upon an article that you want to read, but it's in a language that you're not familiar with. All you got to do is go to, go to Google translate and instead of having to select paragraphs at a time to understand them, this option lets you not only change a sentence or a word, but the entire website. So this is so really awesome aspect. And again, we can you can do this for documents. So if you want to go back to Google Translate, all right? And if we click on, let's say documents, right? So if you have any documents you 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 want to <coughs> you want to translate? Yeah. So let's say we 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 copy the we copy the Japanese into a Google Doc, right? All right, so now we have this document, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to download that document. Good, all right, go back to Google Translate. Yep, all right, and then go drag the, perfect. So now we're going to drag that, that, that document with the Japanese Bible in it right now. So now Victor's going to click Translate, right? This is kind of technical. I don't use this one that often. I find it easier to copy the phrase from the document and put it in but this is also great and then we're going to click open translation so we're click open translation all right so now the, it literally just translated the entire document that we had so as before victor copied and pasted this japanese um explanation of the bible and it was in fully japanese before we copied and pasted the document and now it is fully in english it says the tanakh the hebrew bible is the foundational document of judaism the word tanakh is an acronym for three parts 
So it just translated this entire paragraph on this document from Japanese into English in just five seconds. So again, Google Translate, this aspect is just, it's just, it's an, it's awesome. It keeps you connected from everyone, as I said before, it's very helpful in foreign countries when I've been traveling and I maybe didn't understand something and the person I was talking to maybe only spoke Dutch, right? Because I was in Amsterdam, so maybe they only spoke Dutch. So I was able to actually understand them and connect with them through Google Translate, which was awesome. And let's say if there was a menu that maybe wasn't um, translated into English, you can take a picture of that. You can copy it down in the doc. You can maybe get the website for the, for the menu, copy it right into Google Translate, and you have full um, translation of it, and you're able to order the food, and it explains everything. So, so it's a really awesome aspect. All right. So the next language app that we are going to dive into today is going to be Duolingo. All right. So um, Duolingo, it's the basis of it. It's, it's an app, right? So Duolingo offers activities self-paced lessons and writing and speaking exercises in over 40 language for free. That's that's the great part about Duolingo. I have Duolingo myself, Victor and Nathaniel both have Duolingo. Victor is learning how to speak Japanese. Um, Nathaniel is learning how to speak Moroccan and African and French. So all three of us are actually using this app and it's for free. You're able to, it, it gives you these free lessons as like this another senior text. Zoom, it gives you these free lessons. Um, so Duolingo is, an avail is it available as a website and as a smartphone app. And so you can practice your language skills on the go. So for example, right, if Victor's in a long car ride um, on the way to go somewhere to like New Jersey, right? Instead of him having to, I don't know, maybe learn a language in, in a classroom or by, by another person, all he has to do is just click on an app or go to search bar on Google, look up Duolingo, and he can learn, uh, he can learn Japanese for free. And it goes through a full, it gives you, um, it gives you um, uh, activities every day to learn and get, dive deeper into the language. Um, unlike other sites, using Duolingo feels more like playing a game at times. It tracks your progress as you learn and users earn XP, which are experience points. For successfully competing, completing lessons and unlocking new levels. So as, again, Duolingo, it's not like this boring app where you just sit there and, 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 and learn a language and not in not a fun environment. What Duolingo does is it's free and you're and you're learning this language in a fun way. If you get something right, you get points, you unlock new levels, and it's just it's a really fun app. Um, and so if you have some previous knowledge of a language, you can take the placement test to skip over some of the beginning lessons. Even if you're a complete a complete beginner, though, Duolingo offers a clear, straightforward approach to learning a language that makes practicing skills easy and fun. So again, Duolingo isn't just for, for beginners and it's not just for people who know a little bit about, about the language it there's there's a huge spectrum it helps people who have who want to learn language who have no idea about it or it helps people who are very good at the language and they want to dive more even in dive more even more even into that specific language so now victor let's go let's give a quick uh give a quick demo sure again as you can you can open to a lingo as an app or you can type it in as a website so victor let's look up to a lingo Right. All right. So as you can see, it comes up right away. So now the Duolingo, the world's best way to learn a language. We're just gonna click on that. All right. So now this is the screen. All right. So this is the screen for now. So there's there's a lot to go over. So first of all, you got you got learn, you got characters, you got leaderboards, quest shops profiles and more so now what you're going to do is you start off Victor let's, let's create a profile all right so either way you can use you can click on more you can click on that green button so now we're going to click on create your profile all right so let's say our age is 48 right 21 why not whatever it doesn't matter 48 all right name you don't have to give your name if you want to let's just put a Vic Nathan all right it's my name all right now you are you are, okay so Victor type in Nathan Hiltzik at gmail.com H I L T Z I K at gmail.com. All right. So you're going to type in your, your email and then let's use, let's use suggest a strong password, Victor. Why not? Save. All right. All right. Not worth it. Let's just create our own. Let's do Miller Senior Tech One. So we're going to type in our password. All right. So we're going to type that in. All right. Now let's create an account. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, so 
now we can try uh we can have a free trial for free um and so now we're going to click start right so um victor you want to click start so no no before before we click start you can select the language that you want to sort want to learn so victor you want to scroll up to the characters click on characters perfect click on characters good so now there it shows us so we're going to click on that it's going to say learning Japanese for the first time or already know some Japanese. So as I was saying before, Duolingo, it tackles people from who know the language, who know the language pretty well or don't know it at all. So Victor, let's learn, let's say learning Japanese for the first time. All right, you're ready for a new lesson. So let's skip to lesson or we, I mean, we can show tip of influence. Let's just skip to lesson, Victor. Perfect. All right. So which one of these is sushi? All right. So, as we can tell, the first one, I mean, it looks like a water bottle. The third one maybe looks like rice. The fourth one looks like tea. And so I think the second one is probably, I mean, I think the second one's sushi. So we're going to click on that. Victor, let's click sushi. on that. Exactly. So it's going to give you some tell sushi. It's going to show us what what sushi uh, is in Japanese. And boom, each of steaks cuts one heart. So as you can tell, we got that right. It's a great job. And so the great part about this is it doesn't just teach you through 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 words, it shows you it's it's very uh it's very hands on type of type of uh, of, le of of language learning app right because it's showing us pictures it's letting us use our eyes to help us learn the language through our mouths so now which one of these is water so I mean the first one is sushi as we looked before second one mizu. looks like water so click we're gonna click. and so as you can tell Victor click on it one more time mizu so it's gonna show us how to actually pronounce it in Japanese. So it's Mizu and it's going to show us an English, um, an English pronunciation of it. And it's going to show us a Jap how we write it in Japanese. So now we're going to click check. All right, perfect. Nice job. So as Sushi, you know, we already know Mizu Sushi. All right. So now we got to write this in English. All right. So Sushi. So remember, you can always hover over the words. Sushi. See what so Sushi. now... So now we can see that it's sushi and it's Victor. Go hover over the second word. Kudasai. Please. All right. So as you can see, the first word means sushi. The second word means please. So let's take the take the sushi. Let's type that in and then we'll click on the please. All right. And now, Victor, let's click check. Boom. And we got that. So it's so helpful because I have no idea. I don't know Japanese at all. Victor knows a lot of Japanese. And so as you can see, I mean, I'm, I already know what how to pronounce sushi in Japanese. I already know how to say please in Japanese so instead of it kind of leaving you on its own it really it shows you the pictures first it shows you how to pronounce them in English then it, it it's per, it, it tells us it tells us how to it tells it tells us like what word means what um it shows us how to kind of spell them in a way so Victor, let's um let's click continue all right so now I'm going to say to Japanese so now which word was it it was me so now it, it was it was misu misu all right so victor let's 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 select that and so it's first gonna tell us to translate it from japanese to english but now what it's gonna do is which is gonna get a little harder is it's gonna make us translate from 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 english to now japanese so victor let's type in mizu Mi which means so you see it so it says mizu so it, it really takes a step-by-step -step process and that means water so now victor let's see if we're right and as you can see you can select on water to help you so let's click check perfect nicely done so now we got four in a row, right? All right. So as can you see, this is just a quick, uh, quick example of, of, of Duolingo, right? Um, if you guys may, so Victor, let's con con um, click continue. Maybe some of the seniors want to help us out for this next one. Does anyone want to help us out? All right. So I guess we'll, we'll, we'll do this one. Victor, you want to click use keyboard? Click use keyboard, Victor. Let's, let's click on that. So now it's going to make us write this in. So now let's use Mizu. You type in Mizu. Good. All right. So now let's check. Hopefully we got uh, we did. Oh, oh, we were meant to type it in uh, in actual Japanese. All right. So now we got it wrong. We lost the life. But it's fine. Don't worry. We'll get it. We'll, we'll get it next time. All right. So now, um, as you can see, so Victor, now let's, let's go back to the, let's go back to the main page. Let's go back to the main dashboard. So click X, Victor, click X. All right, end session. All right, click click on X. All right, so now as you see, we're back to dashboards. You can maybe look at, you can look at leaderboards, quests. You can see how far you've gone. So Victor, maybe you want to click on, click on characters as you can see. 
click on characters. So this is just specific characters. If you want to learn, there are two different, clearly there are two different types of Japanese. There's hira, hiragana and there's katakana. So you can learn the two different types. Then click on leader, leaderboards, Victor, click on leaderboards. So this is just starting the lesson. Maybe if you do really well, you can have on the leaderboard. And as you can say, as I said before, you can get um, XP, which are experience points. Then you can do quests, right? So let's say on quests, right? These are just daily quests that it gives you. You can say start a lesson. You can learn, again, experience points, which will help unlock you more quests, which is, real, again, a really fun. Um, then click on shop, Victor. All right, the shop is you can buy unlimited hearts, which means that, I mean, these are, I don't find these really necessary. Um, but I mean, unlimited hearts means that you have unlimited lives and you can't really lose. Um, when you can refill your hearts, because let's say if you, you get five hearts per day. And so let's say if you want to continue learning, you can just buy more hearts, which is great. Um, and then there's all these like cool things besides that that you could buy. And then, yeah, so that's, that, that's basically Duolingo for you. That's, that's the basic stuff. It's really easy to get, to get into. Um, it's really easy to ask access again. Just, you can look up Duolingo on the app store or search it up. You got to create, um, you got to create, uh, an account, but besides that, it's really easy. And so me, Victor, and Nathaniel have been able to, I've been able to learn uh, Spanish and Nathaniel has been able to learn African, uh, Moroccan and French. And Victor has been learning Japanese. So again, it's a really great, um, a really great language. Yeah. So now I'm going to be handing it over to the most Experienced teacher at Midler Senior Tech, um, the H man, Nathaniel Chetch. Read everyone. Okay. Um. Thank you, Nathan. So today I'm gonna be teaching you guys, um, a little bit different from what Nathan did, um, about Wordle and uh spelling bee. So a difference with spelling bee and Wordle between Duolingo, for example, is uh Wordle is a website, so it can't be accessed through an app in the app store, but you basically, it's a very uh, quick, easy thing. It's basically a game that you can access on Google. You can just search up Wordle and uh, it'll come up You click on the link. And it's basically a daily word game where every day there's a new word. And it's basically a puzzle with while using the process of elimination, you're trying to solve a word and um, uh you're basically going to type in a word and then it's going to either give you a green mark on one of the letters or a yellow one. Green is going to represent if the word, if the letter is in the right spot corresponding to the correct word and yellow is corresponding to if the letter is in the word and not in the right place. And then gray would be if the letter is not involved in the word at all. So um, based also, I forgot to mention that each word is five letters and you have six tries. So we could actually, if you guys want, we could try and do the wordle today because every day there's going to be a new word. So yeah, Victor, if you don't look, you're just going to type in wordle in Google and it'll just come up right there. So you just click on it. it, it oh, it's in the New York Times also, just like spelling bee. So yeah, you could click on wordle there and you can log in if you would like, and this would give, this would show you uh, all all the past games you played. So you could check uh, your accuracy and from each day, if you got that right and how many tries it took you, et cetera. So this is what it looks like. You have a little keyboard on the bottom and you have six columns um, and five rows for to represent each word. So, uh, First, what do you guys, if anybody has an idea of a word that would, would be good to start with, if anybody wants to share, feel free. For, for example, I would like to start with about, because I feel that we're getting rid of a lot of the vowels and I find them really helpful. So yeah, Victor just types in about, and once he enters, see, we all, so you marked with gray, shows how you is not in the correct word at all. And we didn't get anything green, meaning none of these letters are in the right space. So but all these yellow letters are in the word, but they're not in the right space. So you can think, what is a word that has T, A, B, and O in it? Hmm. If anybody has any ideas, please feel free and we can, we're can we going to solve this together. Victor and Nathan, feel free also. Abu. 
What? Sorry? Taboo. Taboo. That's a great guess. Um, Victor, why don't you type that in? Yet. Wow. See, that was amazing. We go back. <laughs> I never uh, thought it before. <laughs> yeah, we got that on the that's that's actually very impressive. Usually it takes me a couple <laughs> more than two tries. We got that in two tries. Well, usually this is this was this was amazing, but we get usually I would get another word and then it would give me two of the letters were in the green spot. And you just have to use process elimination to continue. And usually maybe the fourth try I would get it. I ruined but... your class, your lesson. <laughs> no, no, it's great. Thank you. We like anyway. participation. Okay. So that was Wordle. If anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free. Okay. Uh, so Victor, we could go back to the slideshow. So Spelling Bee is as well as a website. Um and it's in the New York Times. Uh, so you to access it, you do the same thing as Wordle. It's also just a fun game, uh, just like Wordle or like uh, Crossword. It's just a fun game like to just if you're bored or anything. But uh, the New York Times Spelling Bee here, or simply Spelling Bee, is a word game distributed in print and electronic format by the New York Times. So you basically would get a screen like this on the game, and you would uh have to try and create as many words as possible so just like here uh down this is what the screen would look like and you just it's just a game you could try and trial and error right so i'm gonna pass it on to victor oh we're gonna oh you want to do an example okay Okay, so Victor, uh, thank you. Um, Victor here, he did the same thing for Wordle where he typed in Spelling Bee um, on Google and he brings you to a New York Times link as well called Spelling Bee, so he clicks on it. Um, and then that'll bring you to that screen. Um, so once we get to the screen, it's this is where we would play and it see on the right side it tells you you have find you have found zero words so that means we haven't done anything yet um so that so we're gonna try and solve more words okay so does anybody have any uh ideas or anything or victor did you type in lolly so that was that was not in the word list so um gauged Sorry? Gaged? G-A-G-E-D? Yeah. yeah, Victor, you could try that one. G-A. G-A-A, Victor. G-A-G-E-D. G-A-G-E-D. -E -E I think he's right. Is that what you said? Yes. So that one was not there. Oh, so one of the requirements of this game is that why... The, the letter in the middle right here, Y oh, has yeah. to be in the word. I forgot to mention that, sorry. <laughs> well, let's do lady, let's do lady, let's do lady, no? Sure. Yeah, because that's a good word. Since Y is at the end, sure, it'll work. Oh, and then we found the words. So the goal of the game, so right now it says we're a beginner, because we found one word, but the goal of the game would define as many as possible. So you from once you get five, it would say good start, and continuing to move up. And if you, you get to 190, they rank you as a genius. So I don't know anybody here would be ranked a genius, but we could try. Yodel. Uh, um, does anybody want to keep trying or we can move on to? Y-O-D-E-L, Yodel. That was wow. a good word. Yoda, yeah. Yoda, Yoda from Star Yodel. Wars. Yodel, like oh, in Yodel. the Swiss Alps. Yeah, we got uh, Yodel got, the word. Yodel. Yeah, we typed Yodel worked. That was really Yodel, good Yodel got us a point. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's do a... Uh... Mm. I... 
E Y E. U I E. Oh, E Y E. E Y E. Oh, oh, uh, so the words have to be above three letters. So okay. only four, five, six letter words will work. I'd E Y E. Oh, five letters? What about Goldie? No, it has to be four, four letters. What about Goldie? What about Goldie? You could, you could try Goldie, but I'd, oh, I'd work. I'd E Y E D. Yeah, yeah, I'd work. work. Good job. See, well, you know it works if it tells you on the right side and that word should pop up. And yeah. It says we have we have three words right now. Try uh Goldie. Gladly. 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 I'll just oh, gladly. That's a good one. That's a yeah. great word. We're at 13. We're dominating. You said yeah, Goldie. Really well. Goldie. Good try. That's not a no. word. Yeah, it's a name. Mm. Let's do Charlie. Golly. Golly. Mm. Did you put gauged? Yeah. Very good. Gauge, gauge doesn't have the Y, so it wouldn't work. Oh, yeah, right. I forgot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this okay. puzzle is very, very challenging. It takes a long time to even know start even moving up. So you could go up to a lot of more standings to grade. I think the longer the harder the word is, the more points you get for it. Yeah. The longer the word is, the more different types of letters you use, the more uncommon it is, you get more points. Mm, okay. Uh, unless anybody has any more words they would like to add, I think we could uh move on. Yeah, we'll go now. Okay. So now after uh recapping basically about spelling bee and wordle, there are basically two websites. Uh, we could go into present. Uh, two websites that you there are no mobile apps for, but you just type it in on Google. You get whatever one you prefer, and uh every day just uh new fun game that uh gets the brain thinking and it's uh yeah just a little fun game so i'm going to pass it on to victor now he's going to teach you a little about ai and uh chat gpt if you've ever heard of that yeah so chat gpt is a computer program that can generate text responses in a way that uh, resembles how a human would write in a chat or messaging conversation you can uh ask this website all types of questions such as who was abraham lincoln what is the stock market or give me a recipe for any dish? You can ask virtually any question and it will give you a concise and precise answer. So ChatGPT is basically, a, it's like a program that will answer any question you have. Whatever your question is, ChatGPT will have an answer. It uses information from the internet and gathers information from all these different websites throughout the entire world and on the uh, worldwide internet. and gives you a precise answer based on all that information. So it's a very helpful tool when trying to figure mostly anything out. So let's say I wanted a dish. I want to know what's the best uh, chicken dish to um, to use for uh, my grandchildren. And it'll give you the best chicken dish, chicken dishes from Germany, Italy, Japan, anywhere and everywhere in the world because it has access to all this worldwide uh, information. And uh, what it's, uh, it's AI, which means it's art artificial intelligence. Uh, it's intelligence demonstrated by machines, as opposed to intelligence displayed by humans and animals. So as I said, this, uh, this AI, this artificial intelligence, um, uh, this artificial intelligence is very similar to how a person would answer, but they have much more intelligence, meaning much more information to answer with. So what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is a computer program launched in November of 2022 that can generate text responses in a way that resembles how a human would write in chat, message conversation, and you could ask this website all types of questions. And we already did these questions, but yeah. So uh, we'll go to an example chat 
you could just search up in your search bar on Google chat GPT and go like this. As you can see, it's the first thing that comes up because it's very popular. You could log in, you could, um, you could log in, make an account, but it's not really necessary. Uh, sure, we could log in. Uh, I just do uh, my email address. Uh, Vermont or okay. Um, we can log in with uh Google. Okay, maybe it's not letting us uh do info at millersenioretech com. So once you're in, once you sign into your account, uh. There is such thing as upgrading your plan uh, plus team, but it's really not necessary. It's for someone that would be using it on a daily basis, maybe in more advanced uh, ways. So this ChatGPT is perfect for what we need to do. So let's say I'm, I really want to know who was, uh, and you could search in this search bar down here and you could ask it who was the 25th president and put a uh, question mark and all you have to do is press this black uh black arrow right here send a message who was the 25th president and it'll tell you uh who the 25th president was and it was william mckinley and tell you when he served from and until his assassination and so if let's say you don't want all these things to clutter up or you want to share this information with a friend, you could uh, press the three buttons right here, more, and press share, rename, or even delete chat. Also, this little uh, box over here, you could archive it. So then it's saved, but it doesn't show up on your, on your chat, on your chat log over here. So... Um, here it has a bunch of, uh, recommendations. It says, how can I help you today? It says, create a workout plan for resistance training. Give me ideas how to plan for my new year's resolutions, compare business strategies for transitioning from budget to luxury, or even recommend a dish, how to impress a date who's a picky eater. Now that one is pretty interesting. Let's say you're grandchildren are picky eaters and they're only going to eat whatever um, they want to eat. And a staple food is uh, spaghetti pasta. So it says uh, one dish tends to be universally enjoyed is relatively easy to prepare is spaghetti with marinara sauce. So it says that this is relatively um, uh a well-liked and well-loved dish by people worldwide. So then it says ingredients, and not only does it give you the ingredients, but it gives you instructions for every step of the way. Uh, so everything that you need to do uh, to create this dish and, um, and all the ingredients that you need to prepare this dish are given to you before you even start. So you could see, what do I need to buy from the store? Is this too difficult? Do I have what, what this is asking for? And it explains everything that you need to know and basically is a cookbook for anything or any food that you'd like to cook. And that's basically that basically sums up ChatGPT. It could really answer any of your questions. It is a really helpful tool for uh, your daily life when you have questions uh, that Google sometimes won't answer. And you could just come to ChatGPT and it'll answer it for you. And yeah, uh, Nathan Holtzik. All right, guys. So here's, here's some announcements that we have for some of the Mittler Senior Tech Company. So please remain on the Zoom until the end of the announcements. We hope that you all enjoyed today's class. And thank you for, for Nathaniel Chetri and Victor Moshe. For, for the help today, guys. Thank you to myself, too. Thank you to all the seniors for coming. Um, And as, of course, we record this class. So let's say you forgot how to play Wordle, forgot how to play Duolingo, forgot how to use 
um, Google Translate. We recorded it. We put it on YouTube. So if you want to check it out, you can check that out. And again, if you have any questions, please, really, if you have any questions, um, please go to info at millerseniortech.com. All right. And so it would be great if you could follow us on social medias. Um, and it's at Mittler Senior Tech. So that would be great if you could follow us on our medias. And so Mittler Senior Tech, Mittler Senior Technology presents. Um, oh, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, we could, we could skip that part. All right. So again, just to remind you guys, as I said at the beginning, there are computer basic classes, which is again, it's just a 10 lesson course about computer and smartphone basics. The reduced price is $750. It is a recorded class by Jordan Mittler himself. If you want to sign up again, you can just go to millercnetech.technology slash basics class. Again, you can also have an advanced computers class if you want to dive deeper into it. Um, and that is another 10 lesson course, the next level of technology skills. And it is $10 taught by who else? Jordan Mittler. And uh, if you would like to actually sign up, just go to Mittler Senior Tech uh, Technology slash advanced, cl advanced class. All right. So there are three different uh, um, aspects of this Mittler Senior Tech company. There are group classes, which are we will come into your senior center, your nursing home, or community center in person or on Zoom to offer our world famous classes. Then we have private lessons, which is what I just showed you, which are basic ones, and then there are the advanced ones for seven fifty and ten dollars. So this is one-on-one -on -one support, either in person or on Zoom, with a Mittler Senior Tech team member to answer all your tech-related questions. If they know Chetrick is really good at that, he does a lot of that. So maybe reach out to him. Um, and then there are Tech Tip Tuesdays, which these. Are, these are probably my favorite part about Miller Senior Tech. Because each member of Miller Senior Tech, right, um, we send out these two to five minute videos about these little tips and tricks about technology, right? So if you join our email list and follow us on our social medias, right, you will receive free weekly clips on Tuesday afternoons with useful smartphone tips. So these are just really fun. You can look at them really quick and they're really helpful. And guys, thank you everyone for coming. Again, if you have a, you want to know about any information or you want to sign up for any of these classes, you want to know more about Miller Senior Tech, just go to MillerSeniorTech.com. And if you have any questions or you would like to sponsor, again, it's fifty dollars per class, but again, it's really helpful. We're able to teach a lot of seniors about technology. Um, and all you have to go to is just info at MillerSeniorTech.com. All right, everyone. Um, is that Victor, Is that it? Yep. Thank you, everyone, right. for joining our class. We Thank hope you have a nice rest coming. of your day. Thank you, guys. You if you have any Thank questions, you. please feel free to reach out to Nathan Hill today.